Hello, I'm Mark Nanneman. This is Power Stuff. Today we're going to talk about how to create a draft email reply with the Graph API endpoint and AI Builder. So this will be triggered when an email arrives uh, in your Outlook, and then it will use GPT to create a response, a draft response, and then it will save that email message in your drafts folder. It won't send it, so you can go in there and look and edit it and then send it. And you'll get a notification with a link to that email. So let's just hop over. So here we are at the Graph API um, documentation on Microsoft's website, the Microsoft Graph REST API version 1.0. And over here on the left, you've got um, quite a few different API endpoints. You can read about references to, to see examples and to see the endpoints and the proper way to structure these uh, calls. I'm under mail and message, and I'm looking at create draft to reply. This is where I get the endpoint to use. And there are a couple, there are a few different ways you can format it. Um, if you're just using it for yourself, you can do me slash messages slash message ID create reply. So that message ID is the idea of the email, email that you want to reply to. Um, you can also do it by users slash their ID, or you can use email address, slash messages, slash ID, create reply. So let's hop over here into Power Automate, and I'll show you how to set this up. So I've got my trigger here when a new email arrives. Um, one thing you want to be thinking about, um, especially with the way I've got this set up, I'm using AI Builder to do a GPT response, to read the email and make a response to it. So I don't want to be eating up all my credits. Um, so you you, you probably, unless you've got um, a lot of credits, you know, you're on a license with a lot of credits, um, you probably want to only trigger this flow for certain emails. So you can create a trigger condition filter, or you could build a condition in here and terminate the flow if the condition isn't met, but it'd be best to um, set up a trigger condition. The way I like to set up trigger conditions is I build them in a filter I throw a filter down here. It doesn't make sense, I know, um, but it's an easy way to help you write the expression. And it's just temporary. We'll delete this when we're done. So we don't even put an array in it. We just we just put whatever properties from our trigger we want to work with here. So I'm gonna say from ends with gmail.com. I want this to be my trigger condition, since I'll send a test email from gmail.com to this one. Um, you could build something more complex here. You could um, you could add different email addresses or someone's name or a certain um, domain here. Uh, and so then what I would do, so I build, the, I build the logic here and then I go to code view. And then here, after where, that's the expression that I would copy. And then I'd go here to my trigger, go to settings, add a trigger condition, and then paste that logical expression code right there. Okay, and then after that, I can just delete my temporary filter. So that's that. Um, right here, I've got a compose, and I'm just storing my email address in the compose right here. Um, and that will be used to make the trigger uh, the HTTP request endpoint down below. Next, I've got this create text with GPT using prompt. So I add this action in here and I just went ahead and created a new prompt, new custom prompt. And it's taking as an endpoint the subject or as an input, it's taking the subject of the trigger email and the body of the trigger email, the message body. I'll just click into edit to show you how my prompt looks. Okay, so here we got the um, prompt designer up. And like I said before, I've added these inputs, email, HTML, and subject. And I put in some sample data there to test it with. And the prompt is simply create a very short one sentence reply to the following email. Ooh. Typo. Okay. And so it takes the subject and the email body. And that's all, it's, all you gotta do. I can hit test right here to run a test on the sample email body. Okay, save custom prompt. 
So now after our create text with GPT creates response to the triggering email, we can compose the payload for our a API call to graph. And I'm just doing it right here in a compose. You could do it right in the, um, in the action, but I like to, out of habit, I like to do them in the compose, um, especially for troubleshooting, you know, a flow failure. All right, so I, it's very simple. You just gotta do message. And then inside message, you have body. Let me see if I can blow this up. So you've got, you've got the parent object, and then you've got message, and that's an object. And then you've got body, and that's an object. And we tell it content type is HTML, and the content is the text output from our GPT action. Right there. So that's very simple. Um, you also have the option, there is another option. Instead of message, you can do comment. So you can, you know, those little comments um, type replies to, to um, an email. You can do that as well. So that's all you need to do. If you wanted to reply to some, reply to the sender, but uh, also reply to other people, you can, uh, there's, you can read the API uh, documentation on graph and and see how to do that. There's even uh, another endpoint for reply to all. All right, so now we have created our payload. Now all we got to do is send it. So here I've got this invoke an HTTP request. So the way you build one of these is you would go here into add an action and invoke HTTP request. And sometimes it doesn't show up at the top like you want it to. And you look for the HTTP with Microsoft Entra pre-authorized. And so you just click on that right here. If it's the first time you're adding one of these to your flow in your environment, you'll have to create a connection. Uh, otherwise, you would need to if you've got other connections, you'd need to um, add a new one for Graph API if you don't have a if you don't have Graph API already. The best way to do that is to use connection references. That's the best way to organize your connections, and <clears throat> you can store those in a solution. So I've got this solution called All Flows right here, and I can pop into that and look at my connection references. Got a lot of connection references here. I haven't cleaned them all out. There's a lot of duplicates. All right, and up here at the top, I've got all my Microsoft intro ones. So here's the one for graph. And if you didn't have one for graph already, you'd hit new and you'd get this uh, panel that would pop up and it would look just like this, except you'd have to type this stuff in. So I'm given, I like to give all these easy to read names that tell me what they are. So enter ID graph.microsoft.com, graph.microsoft.com, and then the connection. This is the tricky part because a lot of times when you add these connections in, they just use your email address that you log in with. Um, so if you don't have one for graph yet, you would hit new connection and it would pop you over here to, to your connections. And over here in connections, you would, um, look for, or you can use your search here. Let's search uh, HTTP. There we go. And we do this pre-authorized one. And here you would have to um, give the base URL that you want to connect to. And that would be our graph endpoint. So we can go here and we can just go to the overview for graph. And I'm just using this part that ends with .com. And so let's go back here and we'd paste this like that and hit create. And then you would log in to supply your credentials to it. And that's how you would create this connection. And then back here in your, back here in your connection reference, you'd hit refresh and pick the last one, like the new one will go at the bottom. And that's how you would do it. 
All right, so that's how you create your connection reference. Um, here, once you add the new action in, you'd hit change connection reference and make sure you've got the right one selected. By default, it's going to my, my uh, dynamics um, endpoint, and I don't want that. I want to use my, you see, I've got a number of them. I got it. I've got dynamics, approvals, forms, and graph is the one I want. So I'd click graph. And then you just do post. You put your URL, the relative URL, and then you would do body and headers as well. And you just drop in the reference to your um, compose up here where you put the payload. I'll go ahead and delete this since I already have one made below. We'll take a look at this. So here is the endpoint, and that's from the graph documentation. We do slash v, v1.0 slash users, and then I drop in the reference to my email address that I stored in a compose, and then I do messages, and then I reference the ID of the message, and you can grab that by doing a dynamic reference, and then you would just... Got this blown up so much I can't even see my um, search. You would find that here, message ID, and just plug that in there, and then slash create reply. Our headers, all we need is content type, and we can do application slash JSON, and then we drop in a reference to this payload compose above for the body. That's all you need to do, and that does it. I've added a further step here to send myself a notification on the power, this action right here, send me a mobile notification. That works if you've got your, um, if you've got Power Automate on your phone, the Power Automate app on your phone, then it'll pop up here on your phone. And you can send a link to the email that was created as well that you can click on your phone and it'll pop open in the drafts editor that you can look at. And so the link is, I get the link by, um, it's a property of the response for that HTTP call where we create the draft. And it looks like, it looks like this. So you'd reference the action that makes the call and gets the response and you put a, you'd reference the, out, the output of that and you'd put a question mark and then web link. That's the property that has the link to the email draft that was created. And so I just give it a little notification saying a draft reply, a draft email reply to the email address of the sender was created, the web link, and then the link label, I just say view draft email reply to, and then the subject line. And that is it. That is the flow. Very simple. To test this, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to use ChatGPT to create a, I'm going to create a bad email, like a long email that's rambling and unprofessional. And I'm gonna send that to myself from my Gmail account. And this is how I actually want to use this um, in, my, <laughs> in my own life. Um, I get really burnt out reading long emails, um, especially when they're rambling and have too many topics. Um, so I like, and I, I struggle, um, I struggle to be brief and succinct with my email replies. So that's kind of why I've got this chat GPT prompt here to create a really brief reply. And I'll look at it and say, okay, that's good. Maybe tweak a few things here and there and then hit send. And uh, probably in the future, I, I will um, update this to, to do some kind of scoring on the emails when they come in. Like how long is this email? How complicated is it? Um, and if it's over this threshold, then create the, the short reply and, and send it to me for approval. So that's kind of where my head's at on how to use this um, practically. So let's go to the next step um, in a moment and we will create our, we'll test this. All right, so here I am in ChatGPT and I just said, write an example of a long, rambling, unprofessional, emotional, confusing email with inappropriate slang that someone in an office might receive from a business associate. All right, and here it gives me this one. Uh, Yo, what's up with that project? Hey, recipient name. So like, blah, 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 what the H, the super frustrating TBH. <laughs> We've even got some emojis in here, um, which is great. 
and it ends with peace. Uh, so I love that. All right. So I just go ahead and paste that into my Gmail account. And right here, let's see, it's going to my, my Outlook email address. Yo, what's up with that project? I just said, hey, I changed a little bit. Say, hey, Marky Mark and peace, Johnny boy. So I'll go ahead and click send. Flow ran successfully. And it popped up on my phone. We can go over here to our Outlook drafts. And I ran it twice just to like get a screen recording on my phone. So I'll delete this one. And it set up my reply to my Gmail and it says, Re, yo, what's up with that project? Hi, John, I appreciate your concerns and we'll get back to you shortly with an update on the project. Easy peasy. So that right there was how you can use the Graph API to create yourself a draft email that hasn't been sent yet. And you can use the AI builder to read the email and make a response to it. Um, so I hope that helps and thanks so much for watching. Thank you. One last thing, I'll also have a link to a blog post on how to do this in a little bit more detail below if, you, if that helps you to read through it better. Um, and it, again, if you found this helpful and you liked it, please give me a like, subscribe, and share it around. Thanks so much.